Hello and welcome back to Starry Sky. Let's get started. It's April 13th. After PE, I changed my clothes and head back to the classroom. Kanato is nowhere to be found. For some reason, I feel anxious and head over to Suzia. Hey, where's Kanata? Was he excused from PE? Hmm, yeah, he went to the health office. I thought so. Kanata's health hasn't been so good lately. It seems like he's trying to hide it, though. Since we've been together for a long time, we notice it immediately. He should have sought out PE from the start. That's impossible for him. I'm gonna go check up on him. Okay. Suzia seems as if he had something to say, but I was set on heading for the infirmary. Either way, I'm pretty sure of what Suzia is thinking. Whenever Kanata's health is bad, his mood plummets. That's why he goes off on his own, separating himself from the people that care about him. I couldn't leave him like that. Excuse me? Ah, Kanata, are you alright? Oh, it's you, Kayla. Kanata looked as if he was about to leave. As always, Ho Hoshizuki-sensei isn't around. Despite being Seigetsu Academy's school doctor, he is rarely ever here. Kanata, are you feeling okay? It's just anemia. You look so pale. Do you want to rest some more? I'll go get Hoshizuki-sensei. No need, I'm okay. But I said I'm okay. As expected, Kanata's in a bad mood. His complexion is terrible, and I can't see how he can possibly be okay, but... It seems as though he doesn't want me to see him in his weakened state. Hey, have you been sure to properly go to the hospital lately? Sometimes, on days off, Kanata goes to the hospital for treatment of the disease he has been suffering from since childhood. Since the state of his condition had been stable, Kanata has been allowed to live a normal student's life. However, when he was younger, he was often hospitalized repeatedly. I'm alright, don't worry, Kayla. But, if you weren't feeling well today, you should have taken a break from PE. Kanata, you keep pushing yourself. I'm worried about you. Like I said, don't worry. I'm happy that you're worried about me and all, but... But I... You're the only one I don't want to worry. Kanata admitted that and averts his eyes. Feeling as though he was shutting me out, I just stand there frozen. Kanata... Why? The health office door opened, and I looked over my shoulder to see Yokun and Suzia. Excuse me, ah, uh, there you are. Since the delinquent seemed he wasn't feeling good, I came to take a look. You sure do like to say boring things with a serious face. So, are you feeling a little better now? You guys all worry too much. Quit worrying. But you... Ah, I'm gonna leave early today. See ya. Ah, uh, Kanata! He left. He wouldn't hear me out. Since his health is declining, I truly want to talk with him about it, even if it is painful for him. It's a bit lonely to be shut out. How unusual. Kanata doesn't normally act that way towards you, Kayla. Well, you could say that's what normally happens. There's nothing we can do. Yeah. Why? Did something happen? Not knowing Kanata's circumstances, Yokun seemed quite shocked by his behavior. He glances from me to Suzia with a more serious expression than usual. Seeing that expression on his face, Suzia nodded. It's probably best if Yokun knows about Kanata's health. Yeah, you're right. I've been curious for a while, but is there something wrong with Kanata? Well, since Kanata was a child, he's been hospitalized frequently. Is his body weak or... Because he's like this, I'm unclear on the details, but Kanata suffers from a disease. His health deterioration, as well as his anemia, are both due to this disease. It's incurable, and there's a chance it will eventually take his life. Oh no! His life? Despite that, Kanata won't go to the hospital. So Kanata has that kind of condition. I had no idea. You didn't notice because you weren't supposed to. Kanata hates when people worry over his health. I think back to when he pushed me away earlier. My chest tightened up. I was only thinking of Kanata, but maybe I'm only bothering him. Since he's been acting lively all this whole time, I thought he had gotten better already, but... There's no way he could get better that easily. Yeah, 
I was worried since his complexion has been bad since morning, but it really is his health deteriorating after all. Even now, without noticing it, Kanata is off somewhere fighting with his disease. Earlier, Kanata seemed like a wounded beast. I'm sure he didn't want you to see him in his weakened state. He always avoids situations like that. I wonder if I'm bothering him. He said I was the one who he didn't want to worry. <sighs> I never would have expected him to say something like that. It can't be that you're bothering him. You know Kanata's not an honest guy after all. I hope so, but... Also, this is the first time I'm mentioning this to you, Kayla, but... There's a reason why he fights. Huh? What do you mean? Could it be to fight back against his disease? Susie nods solemnly. That's right. Kanata has quite a complex about his health. In order to escape the reality of his weak self, he started fighting. No way. Doing stuff like that will only needlessly take a toll on his health. He says only when he's fighting, does he feel healthy again? It probably allows him to escape the reality of his illness. Kanata. That's easy to understand, just like Kanata. Well, it's not like I don't understand, though. But won't fighting undoubtedly make his health even worse? Since his disease is already incurable, he's probably trying to cope with the burden of it. He should at least be cautious of fighting. It's not good for him. Yeah, well, it's something Kanata needs to come to terms with on his own. However, we'll do what we can for him. Yeah, if Kanata would look at his health realistically, then maybe he'd finally be able to get on the right track. Also, it's forbidden to talk about this in front of him. I know that. When I saw him earlier, I didn't have the nerve to say anything. Since we don't want to cause him unnecessary stress, we don't want to bring up anything related to his disease. Yes, I know. But... We'll do as much as we can to watch over him and to make sure he doesn't do anything rash. That's right, I'll keep an eye out for him. He said he didn't want us to worry, but Suzia, Yokun, and I all treasure Kanata. So regardless of his wishes, we couldn't help but to worry. In order not to burden Kanata, I vowed to keep a close watch on him. Surely he'd be able to forgive me for that. Tuesday, April 14th. As classes ended for the day, the four of us hung out together as always. We had been assigned a lot of homework today and talked about trivial things. Now then, we just got Venus observation assignment, but let's get it out of the way and go observe it tonight. Oh, agreed. Let's go. I'm also for it. The teacher said that during this time of season, Venus and Moon are really close and are really beautiful to see. I also want to finish the homework as soon as we can. Man, homework's been non-stop, but with the four of us, it'll be a piece of cake. Oh, Kanata! Recently, we just keep getting more, haven't we? But since it's fun, it's fine. Ah, but isn't it supposed to be cold tonight? When Yokun mentions his concern about the weather, I knew that a subtle way of worrying about Kanata, making a warm, fuzzy feeling envelop in my chest. Then I'll prepare some warm drinks. Yay, I'm looking forward to it. The Venus Evening Star comes out just three hours after sunset. Let's get together earlier than usual. That way we can finish before it gets cold. Then let's meet up before sunset on the rooftop. Okay, you definitely can't be late. Roger! We temporarily returned to our room to get ready. And once evening came, we gathered at the rooftop garden. Wow, there's a lot of people here. I wonder if everyone's doing their homework. Many students were already there setting up their things. We picked out our own spot and spread out our notes. Since we still have time before it gets dark, let's go over today's classwork. Sure, let's do that. Ugh, just like class. I brought my camera with me, so it's okay if I take pictures of the scenery. It can't be helped. Go ahead, do whatever you want. As Kanata began going around and taking pictures, we opened up our notebooks. Our notebooks are filled with notes detailing Venus. Venus is the second closest planet to the sun. Because of its location, it can only be viewed from the Earth for a short time. The best time to view Venus is either three hours after sunset, where it's called the evening star, or three hours before sunrise, where it's called the morning star. Venus's beauty can only be seen for limited times in the evening and dawn. Earth and Venus are said to have similar dimensions and resemble each other in many ways. 
Despite that, Earth is the only planet that life can thrive on. The Earth has oceans, but Venus does not. Because of that, the atmosphere is thick with unrecycled carbon dioxide. Another theory is that Venus originally did have oceans, but because of its closeness to the sun, they evaporated. Due to its thick atmosphere, Venus's sky looks red. A red sky, huh? I wonder what that's like. A scorching hell with sulfuric acid rain, dry barren plains, and volcanic plains. I wonder if it's something like that image. The Venus we see from Earth is so beautiful, and yet it's a world humans can't set foot on. We reviewed our notes on Venus before we started the observations, and before we knew it, the area around us had begun to get dark. Wow, we got so wrapped up in our reviewing without even noticing. Hey, you can sort of see Venus. Look, can you make it out? Conatus pointed up at the darkening sky. Little by little, in its position near the moon, Venus grew more and more radiant. The orange-colored speckles in the western sky began to fade, and when I noticed it, the sky had completely transformed to the color of night. The evening sky that can only be seen for a few hours of the day was the best luxury, in my opinion. It's so beautiful! As the darkening sky's many colors began to fade, Venus and the moon glow faintly. It's both beautiful and magical. The changes in the sky during this time are vivid and easy to see leaving the four of us lost for words as we gazed upwards. The sunset was beautiful, but now that it's dark, it's easy to see Venus. After the sun and the moon, Venus is the brightest of the celestial bodies, so naturally it stands out quite a bit. Seriously? It outshines everything else. It's a wonder it doesn't shine through the day. Its English name is Venus, the goddess of love and beauty in Roman mythology. Venus is equivalent to Aphrodite of Greek mythology. The planet sure is lucky to be named after Aphrodite. I can't help but admire Venus as I look through my notes. It is named Venus after all, the goddess of love and beauty no less. It's just like you, Kayla, shining very cutely and bright. Huh? Ugh, just like her? Love and beauty? <laughs> my stomach hurts. Kanata! Now, Kanata, that's rude. If you're going to laugh, do it so that she can't hear you. Even you, Suzia, don't laugh so much. You too, Yokun, don't say such embarrassing things. I'm sorry, don't pout. It was just being sincere. To me, you're in existence just like Venus. Oh, Yokun. Yokun looks down into my eyes and smiles gently. You sure have the nerve to say such shameful lines fluently, don't you? It's admirable for some reason. Kanaja, have you admitted defeat? Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Doesn't Venus only shine for a certain amount of time, though? If not for the sun, it would be the brightest, wouldn't it? Yep, that's right. The order of the planets in the solar system goes like this. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Venus revolves very close to Earth. Aha! Uh -huh. It's coming from the opposite side of the sun, which is why it's impossible to see from Earth. I still don't really get it, even after the explanation, but isn't it basically always shining? It's shining, however, like Susia said, it's just that we can't see it. During the times Venus gets especially close to the sun, and its position's just right, is when it's called the evening star and Venus in the eastern sky. That makes sense. Well, either way, it's thanks to the sun that it shines at all. If Kayla was Venus, for her to be shining even brighter than she is now, an existence like the sun is necessary. Uh-huh. Out of the three of us, who do you think that person is? Man, getting bold again. Who is like the sun to me, huh? Well, obviously we're going to say Kanata. Kanata. Everyone's eyes widen in surprise at my immediate answer. Even Kanata seems surprised. A immediate answer? Yeah, immediately reconsider. Huh? Oh, Susia, you're not supposed to react that way. No matter how long we've been childhood friends, that's rude. But why Kanata? And you two, don't say it in such a blatantly dark voice. Huh? Well, it's because without someone to say stupid things, you have no one to correct, right? Oh, burn. The three of them fell completely silent. Huh? Did I say something weird? 
<laughs> oh, so that's what you meant. <laughs> huh? Kanuto was the only one still trying to figure it out. Suzie roared with laughter, which in turn made Yokun burst into laughter as well. Oh, who says stupid stuff? Damn it! Ah, crush my expectations. Expectations? You expected something? What did you expect? Great job leading into the punchline, Kanata. Shut up, damn it. You all better remember this later. <laughs> How should I put this? I somehow get the feeling that I've come to really understand you, Kayla. Really? Was it something I said? You're fine. That's your good point, after all. Can you stop with that kind of compliment? Yeah, yeah. Kayla's airheadness is lovely as well. Airheadness? <laughs> airheadness. Well, if that's an actual compliment, then thank you. The breeze began to pick up. It's gotten a little cold. It's completely dark out now, too. It's not quite late enough to see Evening Star Venus. But I'm worried about Kanata's health. We still have more homework to do, so we should head back soon. Next time, I want to see the Venus Morning Star. That sounds good. Let's do it next time. The beauty of the sunrise is different from that of the sunsets. Yeah! Ugh, doubt I'd be able to wake up for that. Don't worry, I'll be sure to wake you up. Then if that's the case, wake me up too. I'm bad with mornings. Be sure to wake me up too! Good grief, you guys. Somehow I already feel like a parent. Susia is like the dad. What are you saying now? If you don't look after us, Suzia, who will? Exactly! Since Suzia is here, I can somehow feel assured. Right, I can understand that feeling completely. Surrounding the amazed Suzia, laughing happily together, we turned toward Venus, which shone brightly in the night sky. I'm glad that everyone could be so lively today, including Kanata. April 16th. Okay guys, that's it for now. We'll get back to the classroom drama next time.